Hi, my name is Bill Graber with the Energy Conservatory, or TEC. Welcome to Air Measurement Training. Today's session is brought to you by TEC and our partners, Bill Spohn from True Tech Tools and Ed Jonawat from Eastern Heating and Cooling Council. In this session, Steve and I will take you through the step-by-step -step process for measuring with the digital TrueFlow solution. The equipment needed here, not surprising, is the digital TrueFlow. The solution includes the grid and the DG8 manometer. You can also just buy the grid. You'll also need to download the free app, and it comes with a static pressure probe and some tubing. You will also need a drill with a quarter inch bit to drill some ports. There's two workflows that are supported by the TrueFlow app. One is for measuring flow only, and the other is for making a series of pressure readings in addition to flow. We'll start by looking at flow only. The first step is to download the free app to your mobile device. And then step one is to follow the app as you connect your devices and enter the system information. It's a five step process once you've opened the app where you'll go through these five steps of entering the type of measurement you're making, connecting to the devices, and then entering some specific information about the system that you will be measuring. Let's take a look at Steve in the TEC Training Center. So you first turn on the DG8 and the digital true flow grid. And in both cases, you do that by holding down the left power button until the green light flashes. Then in the free app, you select what kind of measurement you'll be taking and Bluetooth connect to both the gauge and the digital grid. Once connected, you'll select what kind of air handler measuring either a furnace or an air handler. You'll enter the orientation and then provide three pieces of information. The cooling capacity in the TEC training center is 2.5 tons. The air filter location, either filter slot or filter grill, and the cooling climate, either humid or dry with defaulted flow rates of 350 and 425 CFM per ton. Once you've entered the system information, the next step is to get the supply plenum pressure. So here you'll be drilling in a quarter inch port for your static pressure probe and using the DG8 or another manometer to measure the supply pressure. Steve is drilling a port in the supply plenum and then he'll use his static pressure probe to get his pressure reading. It's connected to the DG8 and then through the Bluetooth connection, he's ready to make the measurement in the TrueFlow app. Once that reading is taken, it will indicate it's time to put in the digital true flow grid. Okay, the last step is to replace the filter with the true flow grid and get your flow measurement. So the app says leave the pressure probe in the supply plenum, turn off the air handler, replace the filter with the true flow, and then turn the air handler on. There's Steve turning off the air handler. And in the TEC training center, we have a filter slot, so he's removing that filter. He'll replace that with the digital true flow grid, having the TEC logo pointing into the flow and make sure it's flush against the back of the filter slot. When that's done, it's time to turn the system back on and once at the right flow, ready to take a measurement in the app. The Bluetooth connection makes sure that the digital true flow reading is recorded directly into the app. Once that's done, you get your reading output, which can be stored as data, sent to the cloud, or a PDF report. In the example, you saw the digital true flow being used in a filter slot, but it can also be used on a filter grill. So that's the flow measurement only process. Pretty straightforward. You measure the supply plenum, you replace the filter with the grid, and it does a correction for the difference in pressures between the grid and the filter to make sure you get a very accurate, very consistent flow reading using the digital true flow grid. Uh, so that's the, that's the simplest process. You might use this approach of flow only if you're grading a new installation or just confirming a new installation. That means that you're typically comparing what's the actual flow 
to what the design flow is. And so there's a report that you can get from the app that will allow you to enter the design airflow, provide the actual airflow, and if you're doing a grading per ResNet ACA 310, provide you that grading result. Now that we've seen the process to measure flow only, let's look at the other process, which is pressures and flows being used together. This process will be used more often in an existing installation. So as I just said, you continue to measure flow with the grid. You'll still have your supply plenum, but now you'll measure the return plenum, measure after the filter and before the coil in our furnace example. So uh, in the TEC training center, simulated four different issues in our system. So we'll take you through this one in some detail so you can see it. We'll show you all the pressure ports that, that we put into the system. And then this situation where we've put in a restriction on our filter grill that simulates a return duct system that's undersized. Then you'll see just the results where we went in, simulated an undersized supply duct. Then you'll see the results when we've simulated a dirty filter and simulated a restricted or dirty coil. So let's hand it off to Steve to look at this situation and all the measurements that were made. So here's Steve removing what simulates a normal return duct, and he's putting in the more restrictive plate that allows us to simulate a restrictive or blocked return duct system. So once that's in place, he will need to add the three additional pressure ports, one in the return plenum, one just after the filter inside the furnace cabinet, and then the last will be on the exit of the furnace cabinet before the indoor coil. Now the indoor coil is taken off here for the demonstration to show where he's drilling. Better to drill at the top of the furnace cabinet where there's room than into the coil cabinet where you might damage something. Once that's made, you just follow the app. So he's using the same structure, a furnace in an upflow orientation. The cooling capacity is 2.5 tons. And then you will see Steve follow the app process. So it the return duct is in gray here. And so he's putting the static pressure probe in the return duct and now he's ready to take the measurement. So you'll see he hits take measurement and then the DG8 is Bluetooth connected to the app and you'll see the 0 0.519, 518 is stored. It then indicates go to after the filter. So he moves the static pressure probe to there and hits take measurement. Now we'll see something like negative 0.63 stored as the after filter reading. And now the app is indicating let's measure before the evaporator coil. And so he moves his static pressure probe to that location and hits take measurement once again. The app is connected to the DG8 and will store the reading it gets there. And then Steve will move the static pressure probe to the supply duct. In this case, we've actually shown one up higher. It can be the lower one or the higher one. The point is you want to be as close as you can get to the furnace cabinet, but just get a good supply pressure reading. With those four pressures, he's now ready to put in the digital true flow to get the flow reading. So he's turned the system off. Once again, he is going to pull out the filter and replace it with our digital true flow. The digital true flow is also Bluetooth connected to the app. So he's left his pressure probe in the supply plenum. He's turned off the air handler. He's replaced the filter with the true flow. He's ready to then turn on the air handler. And once that's back on and at the right flow, he's ready to take his flow reading. So here's the digital true flow reading being taken by the app. Once that is taken, all of the measurements are stored and we're ready to review the results. You can save those results as data, as a PDF report, and send that to the cloud or in a text or attached to an email. So in this case, what did Steve diagnose? Remember, he restricted that return. 
So it's indicating your return plenum pressure is high and your airflow is low. If you click the details, the TrueFlow app recognizes that issue and offers you some guidance. Okay, in this situation, Steve made the series of pressure measurements and then the TrueFlow app calculated six different values for us. The flow as measured by the digital TrueFlow, the total external static pressure, and then the filter pressure drop, the indoor coil pressure drop, and both the supply and return plenums. Remember, in this example, Steve simulated a return duct system that's undersized or blocked, and the true flow recognized that both the flow was a little low and the return plenum pressure was high. Now, with the app, you can also document the system conditions of what system you were working on and the air measurements that you made. Then there's a performance summary that shows all the calculated values and any summary of warnings. It does also use GPS to document your location. And then more details are on the second page. Any additional information or comments you want to enter, and you can also put in some pictures of the equipment. That's all supported through the TrueFlow app. And this app is on the roadmap to work directly with MeasureQuick. So in the case where we simulated a uh, undersized supply, in that case, the app recognized that the supply plenum pressure was high, even though the flow was okay, and provided an initial thoughts around possibly the supply ducts being blocked or that they were undersized. Same situation here where we can get the report where we simulated a dirty restricted coil the same thing was determined and diagnosed, saying, hey, you might want to look, you might just have a, a very dirty coil uh, and it needs to be cleaned. There might be an issue with the sizing of that coil. Similarly, in the situation where we simulated a dirty filter, it recognized that issue and provided a diagnosis and some suggested actions for that. So that should give you a feel for how the whole uh, system works in a troubleshooting environment on an existing installation. So you've seen the two workflows that the digital TrueFlow supports, both airflow measurement only and the full pressure and flow diagnosis. The flow only might be used when you're doing new installs, either by your company policy or perhaps it's a situation where you're grading it per ACA ResNet. And then you'll use the full system analysis on existing installations where you're looking to propose good solutions with good data and measurements behind it. So what are the pros and cons of this approach? The pros are it's best in class flow measurement. Uh, it really is highly accurate. It's designed specifically for residential HVAC airflow. It's straightforward, very consistent process that can be used in many different situations, whether you have filter slots, filter grills, multiple different configurations. It's gonna get you accurate flow measurement. It supports the broader flow and pressure analysis and it's recognized for grading new installations per ANSI, ACA, and ResNet. The cons are, historically, the legacy TrueFlow is very expensive. I'm gonna show you in just a minute, this new digital TrueFlow solution, while having more capability, is also dramatically lower in price. One of the other downsides of this approach is you do need to pick adapters so that it will fit into your filter grill or filter slots that you typically will see. And then, Last is, there's quite a bit of math involved if you're doing a full pressure and flow system analysis. And so there is math, but if you use the digital TrueFlow solution, all of it connects Bluetooth to your mobile device and all of the math analysis and diagnosis is done by the free TrueFlow app. So if you've seen or heard of the legacy TrueFlow, this I'm just going to step through quickly. This is essentially the ad for the digital TrueFlow. The legacy was pretty expensive because it required our T, uh, TEC DG1000 flow and pressure gauge, which is really a blower door gauge. And so it was quite expensive at 2490. The new digital true flow solution, which eliminates the needs for tubing, the gauge, one gauge is built into the grid. You'll get the second DG8 gauge. The total solution is over $1,000 cheaper at 1340. 
and that's nearly half the price. You'll get the app for free, all of the analysis, math, and diagnosis. You'll get the static pressure probe and tube, the DG8, and the digital true flow grid. So you have two options on the digital true flow. You can buy the grid only for $7.95 or the total solution for $13.40. One last chart that shows those comparisons on the left is the grid only, on the right is the solution set. So you're going to get um, the, the grid, the filter adapters, the calculations, uh, the built-in pressure gauge and Bluetooth with the new digital TrueFlow grid compared to the legacy, which was only the grid and adapters, and it comes in $100 cheaper. For the solution, you're coming in at four, almost half the price, over $1,000 cheaper. And then you get this step-by-step -step process for doing pressures and flow, and then some diagnostics built around all of the math that it will do. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this session on the digital true flow. Uh, we thank our partners, Bill Spohn from True Tech Tools and Ed Johnawak from Eastern Heating and Cooling Council. If you have any questions or are looking for more information, visit us at hvacairflow.com. Thanks for joining this session and hope to see you again soon.